welcome uh, to another installment of Hit the Bar, the Aussie campus. This is the channel that stops the clock for you and peels back the onion of what people are actually saying live in their messages to see if what they're saying lines up with what the Bible teaches. Uh, good day. Thanks for joining us. We are the No Apologies Lads from Down Under, uh, your host for this program. I'm Phil Chambers, and here with me in the virtual studio is Steve Falkin. Say good day, Steve. G'day, everybody. How's it going? We've got Harvey Ward as well. Hello. Good to be good to be here. It is good to be here. It's good to have you here. One more day above ground is a good day. And uh, of course, joining us from the beautiful Blue Mountains outside of Sydney is Craig Lodell. Good morning, everyone. It is good morning. Well, it could be good evening. Good, good morning, good, good evening, and good night. <laughs> I remember that one. Hey, so folks, if you're like us, you've probably heard messages where uh, the Easter story is spun into a gloss about, yes, Jesus died and was resurrected, took care of your sins, and now the rest of the gospel message is all about you. Well, if you've heard that, please consider subscribing to the channel, ring that bell for notifications, and leave your comments in the chat. Today, we're going to continue our coverage of what we call the narcissistic world of Pentecostal and New Apostolic Reformation churches. We are going to look at Phil Pringle from C3. Many people have heard of Phil Pringle and C3. Um, before we get the desktop going and spin the wheel a bit, uh, Craig and Steve, you guys have both had some time and experience with C3 churches. Just uh, maybe just starting with you, Craig, and then you guys have a brief convo about your experience in C3. What did you learn from that? Look, there's a lot of things to learn from C3, and um, I, I found C3 to be a bit of a mixed bag. Sometimes you get good message, and sometimes you get something that's not quite right, and sometimes you get something that's just downright a doctrinal disaster. And so... <laughs> uh, so today, uh, you know, we're going to look at, at Phil Pringle. He is the leader of C3 churches worldwide. He uh, preaches from the uh, the church in Oxford Falls, and uh, which is the head church for that movement. Um, and yeah, uh, over to you, Steve. You. So, I'm trying to think now. This is 2000 and. Eight, I think 2007. So 2006 is when I left a very abusive Pentecostal cult. I think it started out as a church. This is not the C3. Um, I had been in there for 25 years. I was a young kid when I was drafted into that organization. I'm using those terms deliberately because I don't think that I really understood what it meant to be a Christian while I was in there. Um, and when I got out, I was very angry with God for I didn't go to church for quite a while. And friends of mine invited me to a local small C3 church here in Coffs Harbour. And I have to say that the people were lovely. They were very friendly. I'd never really met Christians outside of the organization that I was in because it was such a cultish kind of organization. And so, and because I, I didn't have a doctrinal focus at that stage, I had no idea what Christian doctrine was like. So people could have really told me anything and I wouldn't have known the difference, to be honest. Um, and it's only years later as I went through another yet Pentecostal church and eventually started looking at Pentecostalism as a, and, and looking at really orthodox Christianity as in through the church history and all sorts of different things that I came to understand that there are, there are big differences in Christian denominations. So I, I would agree with Craig that some of the messages I think now when I look back were quite good, but some of them were absolutely disastrous and today i think we're going to look at just such a disaster well steve why don't you spin the wheel uh get that desktop humming and we'll uh take phil pringle and uh have a listen to his most recent easter message so you, you do realize we're starting with a bit of a intro but we'll, we'll fire it okay oh well, well that's all part of the uh, wow factor which is at c3 hepburn heights two on good friday two on Easter Sunday, 
and you need tickets for those. And so you need to head to that website that you can see right now, check out all the details, great opportunities. But if you can't make it in person, it's okay. Okay. There'll be beautiful, wonderful Good Friday and Easter Sunday online church services as well. It's going to be a great weekend. It will be brilliant. Great weekend. Right now, we have a wonderful new song from our very own worship team. When We know you're going to love it. Yes. Let's open our hearts. Yes, this song, Make Room, is all about creating space where God yeah. can come. So let's pray right now. God, we open our hearts to you. So, Craig, was that an actual wave? We there? make space. We yeah, make it was a wave. Uh, Steve, can we actually fast forward through the other side of the song? Because honestly, if we want to start on doctrinal disasters, we'll be here all day talking about this song. So, oh, look, I, I agree. Um, I'll just give that a try. Uh, because, the, yeah. Oops. Yeah, you, you go ahead. While you're doing that, the, Steve. The, the, doing the song, uh, I've, 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 I pulled the words up on the song this morning. And uh, uh, apart from the, the ad lib Jesus thrown in, you could literally take this song, play it in any uh, bedroom around the world, and um, it would make you feel good, but it wouldn't give you any substance whatsoever. So, um, is that kind of like the Jesus is my boyfriend kind of song that you've talked about no, before? It, it, it was more of it's more about um, there's actually nothing of substance, uh, you know. There's, they talk about laying something down. What it, what that is, they don't define. What the purpose of laying it down is, they don't define. What the benefit is of laying it down, well, you know, it's a bit, you know, it's, mm, yeah, 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 uh, understood, understood. It's 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 a nothing message. It is not worship, and therefore, yeah, it, it, it has no truth in it, and yep. therefore it isn't worship. It's what we talked about last week, if you yep. were listening last week. I was listening because I was here. Yeah. I got so, that. Hey, Steve, how, how about now? Is this ready to rock and roll? Yeah, we're ready to rock and roll. Um, just I wanted to say that uh, I think having listened a little bit more lately to their line, I have a sense um, – and you, you, Craig, you you might sort of resonate with this a bit as well. I know that the, the Phil Pringle is really into word of faith. This is this is his his mm -hmm. his base roots. But I mm -hmm. actually think that both Hillsong and C three are now probably more a halfway house between a progressive liberal church that has some. Um, word of faith sticker stuck on the outside of the peak. Um, and and I'm, I mean this without trying to be disrespectful, but progressive Christianity, I think, is almost more dangerous than, than word of faith because at least word of faith honors the idea or at least wants to honor the idea that Scripture is their basis for it. I listened to an interview between... Josh McDowell's son, I think he's called Josh McDowell Jr., um, and a yep. pastor of a progressive church in California who came out of a typical standard Baptist church. And this conversation was not a debate. It was just like getting to know each other. Of what do you think? What do you think? It was an interesting, interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. And in all honesty, I think you could have put Phil Pringle and Bill, uh, not Bill Houston, what's he called? Brian Houston. Mm -hmm smack back into that you could have swapped the photos out and you would have gotten the same thing and i i was like wow they, they're actually more progressive than what i realize there's a Just bit a to thought. look at as far as progressive uh church goes there's other um hit the bars we'll be doing on that in the future so with that bit of a theme um before we do that, yes. before we do i just want to say from the outset i have heard phil Pringle speak many occasions at our national conferences and stuff like that when yes. i was in the c3 church and Phil sometimes gets it right. Uh, it's a, yes. it's a, it, and and uh, the message that he preaches is sometimes very, very, very good. Yes, However, good. when it's mixed with some of the very, very bad, it, uh, it, it tends to discount that, that very good. And so I'm not going to discredit everything that Phil says, 
But um, let, let's go on to this message and see what yeah, he actually has to say in this one. That's a good backdrop. Thanks, Craig. Over to you, Steve. All righty. So we'll just flick over to that and just have me there. Oops. I've got doggy treats in my head right now. I don't even have a dog. But uh, healthy, balanced diet. Your little treats all good. Today, your treat, just get on with it, Jace. Today, your treat is Pastor Phil Pringle, founder and leader of our family of churches, is sharing a message with you, with us. So this is actually an Easter message, which we are releasing early. Why? Because we're going to have our local messages from our team coming through on Good Friday and Easter Sunday, but really wanted to get this message out to us as a church family. And I think this can help. Here's, here's two thoughts as we engage with Pastor Phil's message today. Firstly, is, is maybe let's lean in and go, okay, God, this could be a, a good opportunity for me to think about who I can be a blessing to in the Easter season that is coming in. It's like a kind of a preloading and a pre-preparing of us for that, to be a blessing and show the love of Christ as Easter approaches. And, and secondly, I think, again, important for us just to open our heart and go, what does the victory of Christ mean for me in this season right now? What is the victory of the cross? What is being illuminated to me uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through this message to help me be who you've called me to be, God? And so let's open our hearts. Let's lean in and enjoy this brilliant short message from Pastor Phil. Hey, C3 family, what a pleasure to be sharing with you on this beautiful Easter weekend. And as we've entered into 2021, I believe that the resurrection is more important than any other time. I mean, Jesus died on Good Friday so that we could get rid of all our negativity and then and sin. Really? Someone is that why me. Jesus died? <laughs> like, like. You, you can't listen to this guy for more than 30 seconds and just, no, no, Harvey, Jesus Harvey, did not die you? that I can get rid of my negativity. Like, Harvey, I need to ask you, how's your negativity going? This is bad. No. <clears throat> I, unfortunately, I think uh, the current culture has got buzzwords and negativity is one of them. It's a psychological buzzword uh, and people feel that Negativity is just bad vibes, um, <laughs> being critical, uh, people who bring in a critical spirit into a situation or a discerning spirit to say, chaps, we're on the wrong track or so-and-so has, has said something yeah. that's incorrect and so on. And it's perceived as negativity. So the thing to avoid at all costs in uh, this modern age and modern culture is negativity because it's, it kind of is a party pooper thing. Oh, Harvey, that's, that's a little bit negative the way you're talking about that. You're being well, a bit neg negative. About negative. <laughs> I'm just, I, someone's got to define negativity. Yeah. Um, so so I, and if, Jesus if I, died. If someone said to me that, um, Harvey, you're HIV positive and uh, the test came back negative, would I celebrate negativity? Yeah, I think I would. <laughs> <laughs> So, but think about this for a moment. So, so I, I have typical orthodox negativity that I think that, that it's not okay for a Christian to, to affirm somebody who is homosexual. You know, I'm not saying I should have a bad attitude towards somebody who is, yes. who has this issue, um, if, if that's how you want to term it. But so Jesus died so that I could get rid of my negativity of thinking that the Bible is true. Like, oh, oh now you've taken full speed. What? Well, want my HIV negativity? Yeah, I'm yeah, negative about yeah, your I don't positive. want to be rid of that. Uh, so I you can be positive about your negative and negative about your positive on HIV. I think the issue is, is that that when Jesus when 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 Jesus preached, um, he was the authority to determine what's right and wrong. And if he's the authority that determines what's right and wrong, those who are not walking in truth and grace are wrong. Uh, Jesus is the judge of that. 
and Jesus' final word is the authority. And those who listen to his word and don't like it can accuse him of being negative. But it's intriguing that the Ten Commandments contain mostly uh, instructions not to do something. Yeah. There's only one that says do something. But uh, most of them is not to do something. In other words, uh, we are being told by God not to do things. Why? Because there's a propensity to do things wrong. And if we point them out, that is the sin of the age. That's the sin of this age. If you point out that mm. someone's done something wrong, then you have uh, done a grave injustice and you mustn't do that. You're being too negative. Well, yeah, that's if, a good point. No. Oh, no. Well, let, let's, uh, let's wheel it up a bit more, Steve. We've, we've had one sentence from Phil Pringle and talked for five minutes afterwards. So let's go and get with the rest. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and sicknesses and demons and all the things that are going to destroy us. And on the third day, on resurrection day, he rose from the dead in new life. In fact, he was unrecognizable, even by the people who had walked with him for three years. And I believe that whenever somebody comes to Jesus and they discover the, the Jesus who rose from the dead, they're going to be unrecognizable. People will say, man, what's happened to you? Things have changed. In fact, the Bible says that if anyone is in Christ, they're a brand new creation. Old things are passed away. Everything becomes new. And I believe that when we come to Christ, that should be our experience. We are born again. And if you've never done that, good friend, I'd, I'd love to have you say a prayer at the end of this message and ask Jesus to come into your life and have that transformation that only he can bring. We can try in all sorts of ways to transform ourselves, but without him, it's very, very difficult. Let me tell you this, the greatest transformation, I think that... So it's just difficult, right? But you, you can do it yourself. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't, think, I don't think he even believes what he's saying. I think he's just not very doctrinally careful, like... Uh, if, if you if you pinned him down, I don't think that he would actually even agree with this statement himself if if he yeah. actually did a, a proper review. But it does demonstrate mm. the desire or the, the the focus on on being biblical in what he says, right? I mean, you know, even using words like "oh," if you've never done that, like as if you can rebirth yourself, <laughs> like again, like. Doesn't Mickey being Davis gave born it a again um, en that's right. en encapsulate the idea that that's God doing that to you, not you doing it yourself? It's like, why doesn't he, does he term his message DI, DIY rebirth? <laughs> well, maybe we'll get that. Well, let, let's spin him up a bit longer. Uh, let's see where we go. Sorry. Sorry, Craig, yeah. was there a... Uh, before we do, before we do, just keep in mind what he said previous to that, yeah. um, and, and that is that as we go through this talk, um, keep in mind that he said uh, that a believer is a new creation. Let's move on. Okay. Over to you, Steve. All of us could do with right now in the world is the transformation from despair to hope. For many people who are struggling financially, struggling in their jobs, struggling in their health, struggling in any area of isolation and relationships, there's hope. God comes into your world and he brings hope. And Easter is all about hope. It's all about there may be death on, on Friday, but there's resurrection on Sunday. There's weeping in the night, but there's joy in the morning. There's a storm on the lake now but we get to the other side because Christ is in the boat. God is always the God of hope. There's no situation that is too final and disastrous that there isn't some way through it. God has always got a way through to the other side. He is called the God of hope. Romans 15 verse 13 says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy, and peace in believing 
that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God wants you to have an abundance of hope and it comes into your heart through the Holy Spirit as you read the Word of God and you see those powerful promises of God speaking life and faith into you, you know that there's hope. The future is not just dark and black. The future is not a blank canvas either. It is full of hope for anybody who's in despair or discouragement today. Acts 2.26 okay, says that. Come on. Come on, okay. Craig. Let's saw that hand, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I put, that, put up my hand to that one. Look, Getting back to what I said before, he's already established that if anyone is a believer in Jesus Christ, he is a new creation. Correct. And 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 that is you know straight out of uh, 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 Galatians and Colossians. Okay. Um, now, the problem is, if you are a new creation, yet you still need hope. Not that you have hope. You need hope. And this mm -hmm. whole message now turns into this, despite the fact that you are a new creation and you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you still need hope. You need hope to get over financial problems. You need hope to get over your jobs and your health and your isolation and your relationships. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not saying that we don't experience these things. Of course we do. What he's saying is you still need hope for these things. Yet my faith already says to me that I have a hope beyond yes. circumstance That's and right. beyond the situation. And, uh, you know, for many of the people around who have been through this whole COVID experience, it can be draining of that hope, yes, but it doesn't take away from the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? Like, what is the hope? So we just hold that. There, there is no definition in this talk. He no, does not, not define the talk, in the hope. He just says yeah. there is hope. Harvey, you have to chip in, my friend. You're making me look to the chat pod. But I was, <laughs> I was going to throw to you anyway because I did notice a chat pod. But in, in the next videos, I'm not going to look there. It's too confusing for me. Just, just chip mm -hmm. in. But there was some stuff you did type in before that is the precursor to all of this. Which was, <laughs> where's sin? Where's repentance? This is all about temporal troubles. It's like, talk to that for a second. I know you had something you wanted to chip in around that. Um, the kingdom of God is at hand, uh, and the good news of the kingdom is because there's the bad news of the reality and bad news of sin. Uh, and uh, there is no hope unless you recognize where you are and where you need to be. Right. And the Holy Spirit convicts the world of what? Of sin and of the righteousness of God and judgment. That's the can we, Holy can we just chat on that, that thought, thought there for a little bit? Exactly yeah. what you said there, Harvey. The Holy yeah. Spirit convicts us of sin. Now, Spirit. here's an interesting, you know, it's a very interesting point. What meaning are we placing on the word convict when we say that? Does it mean... Oh, oh, I feel oh, I feel bad. That that convicts me. My emotions are tweaked. Or if we take that into a law court, a legal sense, and the Holy Spirit is the prosecutor and convicts us of sin, um, the determination is guilty. Yeah, I mean, the, you know what I mean, like it's, it's not like have, oh, it's not too bad. Well, I, I, this fair island was co was colonized uh, by people who brought convicts uh, yes. here. Um, and populated uh, Australia. So um, we have a long history of convictions. Um, we get it. But <clears throat> the issue is that if the Holy Spirit would bring to mind and bring to our conscience that we have transgressed, that there is a law that we have broken, there are consequences to it, and there will be eternal fallout. There will be right. a realization that we're naked. That's the difference between Adam and his pre-fall state and his post-fall state. Beforehand, uh, he wasn't aware that he had sinned. Afterwards, he was aware yeah. that he had sinned. Yeah. He re realized he was naked. He was ashamed 
and he did hide. So this is the work of the Holy Spirit to illuminate uh, amongst all uh, person kind that they have transgressed and are in need of saving. Starting from there, starting from there, then there is a way back. You have done wrong. Here are the consequences. So that's the Holy Spirit's job in John 14 was Jesus said, he will send him to you. He convicts the world of sin, yep. of the righteousness of God. God's the judge. God will hold you accountable. Here are the rules. Here are the standards. You've broken them. And of judgment. Yes. So the inevitability of the consequences of sin will put you in a position where you realize you need saving. And repentance is the natural and reasonable response when you recognize you have sinned, you've fallen short of the glory of God and do not deserve his grace. Now we're in a position where we can receive forgiveness and be joyful and be hopeful of and that's where God's the hope mercy. is. That's God's where the mercy. hope is. And, 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 and the other thing is hmm. either that if you don't if you miss out that step, then all Jesus becomes is an applique of uh, yep. good times. He's a life coach. Pretty ugly. But he times. doesn't give you the good and, time, of course. You know, the, well, the, the well, multi-level marketing scheme in C three gives you a bit of good time, but only for the guys at hmm. the top. So just, but the, the, the problem is, is this, that the, the Holy Spirit convicts us when the, when the word is preached correctly and it is the upholding yes. of the law that leads a person to repentance. Paul yeah, used absolutely. this word schoolmaster that leads us to Christ. You think of, you know, if you, if you were like me in an old school where, you know, you got the cane as a child um, no, I never did. The, this is the role that the, the law plays. It, it tells you, it, it, it demonstrates to us that we are undeserving sinners and that, and that all we have coming for us mm -hmm. is the wrath of God. And this message contains, of course, nothing of that because mm -hmm. foundationally, I think the gospel has been stripped out of it. So, so people come to come to a false Jesus. They come to a Jesus of their yes. own making. And, you but know, you and know. sometimes people still do come to Jesus because they come in spite of the message. But mm. the, the, the gospel is not in this. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's spin it up. To and some keep, degree, yeah. it's like the, uh, when Jesus said, the gate right. is narrow and few find it. And mm. if people climb into the sheep pen around the gate that's being provided, they um, have not... Uh, grasp the importance of recognizing sin is a problem and the sinner at the back of the synagogue who says, be merciful to me, uh, mm -hmm. I'm a sinner. Yep. He goes away justified. Not the guy who says, I'm lucky that I'm not like these guys yeah. all here. And even attributing God's grace in his life for his success doesn't get to the root of the problem because Jesus says, he does not go away justified. No, he doesn't go right. away justified. <clears throat> the repentance gate has to be the starting point of the good news preaching. Yeah, that's a if, great If point. it isn't, then it's basically a sugar-coated, come to Jesus for more stuff, better life, mm. and you'll avoid all the things you don't have to be worried well, about, be sorry nice. about, yeah. repentance. I don't I, think that I, Phil Pringle's going to go that way, though. What do you reckon, no, Craig? No, well, I don't know. The, the, I don't know. Maybe he will. I don't know. Yeah. The um, other thing we've got that. here is, a, is, is, again, it's starting to be a bit of a mixed bag. He has defined, number one, this is a message to the C3 church. So yes. he's already talking to people who are, who, in, 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 from his uh, own introduction, he's already talking to people who are saved. Yet he wants to, yes. you know, he's applying this, you still need, you still need, you still need, rather than you have the forgiveness of yes. sins. You yes. have that, you know, if this was a message going out on the airwaves to non-believers as an evangelistic talk, then we do definitely need to be still, you know, we start with repentance from sin. We of start course. with Jesus as the answer to that. And, uh, you know, we, we've got, you know, 
we've got chapters on this in Romans where you know we're talking about the the law is gone. We're under grace, you know, and he is talking to people who are under grace, but yet we still need this hope. Not we have this hope in which we stand. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, it's it's a mixed bag message, and it's 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 taking away from the value that we have. Yeah, in Christ, and uh, I think it's it's starting to head down a, a, a really dicey kind of um, track. I think so. Well, let's find out where he goes. Don't, Steve, why don't you spin that wheel? Don't let the truth. Sorry, don't let the truth get in the way of some good confusion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it is. A, I think. I think you've hit it there. It is a confused message. It, a it, he point. doesn't know. He he doesn't know who his audience is. So he's giving it all a mixed bag, and it's it's uh, it it. We'll get. We'll, let's go on. Steve, get that video up, my friend. Jesus, this, these are his words. Therefore, my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh shall rest in hope. He is saying okay. this when he's on the cross. Okay. What do you got? <laughs> Greg, we see you. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Number one, he says these are the words of Jesus. He's got it wrong. Yeah. Okay. This is just plain wrong. These are actually the words of Peter, who is quoting David out of the Psalms about Messiah. Yes. I'm sorry, it is not the words of Jesus, and Jesus did not say this on the cross. He is wrong. Mm, mm. So, I needed to clear that up. I needed no, to get good. that one off the chest. Good. Yeah. I can I I sense that. <laughs> well, let, let's, let's keep it going, Steve. I, I can see. I think we're going to get about... 20% into this message. <laughs> He's saying this when he is crucified and people are mocking him, spitting on him, a spear going through his side. He is saying my flesh will rest in hope. He can't do a thing. How bad is it when you get to a moment in your life and you can't do anything? There's just nothing you can do all right, to try Sorry. and yes. bring Stop. change. We all know or... what has happened there. That is the, the classic switch that's coming in. Christ is dying to pay the price of sin eternally. And then in a snap, we become like Christ to some degree because what was happening to Christ is now all about us because he went through a hard time and we know what it's like to go through a hard it, time. It, so we That's it, right? <laughs> I mean, Je you know, Jesus is the, is, is the exemplar hard time sufferer. It's like, well, you know, Jesus is not the son of God. Now, forget all that. He is the stoic man who knows how to suffer. And he's giving you all these tips on how know. when you hit some suffering in your life, you could just when follow you know Jesus' like. example because that's that's what he went under the cross for. Yes. he well, wanted, I'd, he, I'd be he, worried about viewing Jesus on the cross as um, being helpless and not able to do anything. I like it. Like, this is, this oh, is oh, dangerously. I'm trying, I'm trying to think of the word. <laughs> Heresy? Jesus, Jesus said that I was, you know, if if my kingdom was of this world, I would call, you know, legions yes. of angels to help me. Yeah, that's right. But um, I choose to go to the cross for one. Mm -hmm. I lay my life down. It was an yes. act of being quite yep. capable to have evaded Excellent. it. I like Excellent. the Muslims, quite capable of substituting some other earthly mortal to go through his suffering on his behalf, and he could evade it. But he was quite capable of taking himself off the cross and saving the other two thieves. But it was his love for us that kept him there. So this was an act. This was an act of the will. And it's an act of capability in the face of having the ability to get off the cross, to That's avoid the pain. Um, and so to say, oh, Jesus was helpless. He, he was never helpless. Never helpless. No. It was, he kept Look, himself. Do you see that Jesus. little warning light there? I can. Yeah. Well, have it. We keep talking for a bit and you fix your can, warning can light. You just, can you just take me off the screen? And yeah, mute me, and I'll fix this. Yeah, that's because what otherwise awesome. we're going to run out of battery. You just come <laughs> and do your thing, and we'll come back to you in a little bit there. 
Um, Harvey, you were, you were, this, what you were saying was um, spot on. Uh, there's so much about that. Well, we like to say that about each other. I'd like to endorse you as being theologically correct. But there was a, a great point. One of the things as to why we like to um, hit pause, press stop on the bar, uh, peel back the onion, is that in that word salad sleight of hand that people do, they drop in so much untruth that it is actually heresy, as, as you said and Steve pointed out, is uh, Jesus was not uh, like you suffering helplessly in your life because I don't have the car that works or anything like that I really want because that's so human focused and subjective when Christ intentionally laid down his life, had the power to take it back up again. It was a, it, the death on the cross is absolute victory by the will of God. It's not some accidental, gee, I'm suffering so you can now learn what it's like to, to suffer. It's a, a terrible way of um, of viewing and understanding what Christ did for us. I don't know where where we. Person. And I think, as you quite rightfully say, um, uh, Phil, is that heresy or deviation from the gospel must be defined as um, any statement that diminishes the person, the stature, uh, the mission and the uh, achievement of Christ. Absolutely. Uh, so mm. if he is reduced in some way to being helpless, any less of his divine quality produced the heresies throughout history. Uh, right from the very beginning, where Paul addresses heresy that's crept in in his letters to the churches in Asia Minor, and all the way through, through church history, somewhere along the line, what has been regarded as heresy has crept in because of the person, the nature, and the work of Jesus. And uh, is that has ultimately, no matter how sweetly argued, how well-intentioned, uh, has produced bad fruit, has produced people yep. who are not sold Absolutely. out for Christ, and has produced cults, and has produced derelict faith, uh, loss of faith and, and tremendous pain. Uh, yep, and that's absolutely. why this channel exists for no apologies to find out where the things that are being spoken have diminished the person and work of Jesus. Absolutely, absolutely, and I think that's a, that's a good uh, turning point. To Steve, uh, fire up the the video again. Let's keep hearing a little bit more of uh, of Pastor Phil Pringle and see where he goes with uh, the rest of what he's saying. Feel free to hit that bar, my friend. We do all we can do, but there are times when it's beyond us. And that's where Jesus was. And so he said, I'm just going to rest and hope. I trust God. Somehow he'll get me out of this situation. And you've got to admit, none of us have been in that situation. Nothing as bad as that. But he said, somehow I'm going to get out of this. Somehow I'm going to get through this. And he did. He said, you know, of course, what this, if you, oh, if you, let's say you didn't know that Jesus is both fully man and fully God, which, of course, I think, you know, when you think about the lack of doctrinal definition and the lack of actually teaching orthodox Christianity mm -hmm. in churches today, if, yep. if you listen to his message, you think here is. Jesus as a human being on the cross. He, he's not the son of God. He, he has no aspect of um, this is the all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present, you know, like all of the characteristics that you read of in the Bible, present in the son of God on the cross. No, he is a, he's a poor human being who is just hoping that somehow God's going to get him out of this disastrous situation that somehow he got himself into. Yes. Like, how does that actually provide, even when you're in the context of his saying, oh, hope? Like, because the Christian hope is all about the fact that Jesus paid for my sins on the cross. And, and it's like, no, the yes. Christian hope is 
actually nothing to do with that, according to Mr. Pringle. The, pro the hope is uh, Jesus somehow got through his tough situation. So and I'll get through it's mine. Situation it's, it's situational. It's, it's circumstantial. It's, 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 it's uh, you, you can... <laughs> Uh, the, the the problem I picked up was you can get so far in dealing with your circumstances, with dealing and with your then, finance, with dealing with your health, but then, then you need Jesus. Okay, need no, 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 Jesus hang on. You need to take a step back even further and say, hang on a minute. My sinful situation before being a believer in Christ, yes, uh, my my sinful situation demands that I can't do it at all. No, because I am not. born into this, I need rebirth. Yes, which involves which I can't do. I can't do anything. I need Jesus to do this part. Yes, it's it's just. Oh, it's I'm like, sorry. Mm. They take that. They take that, and the the absolute core message of Christ, the core message of the kingdom of God and the, the, the um, you know, salvation and entering into the kingdom of God as if that's just, yeah, okay, you're done. Mm. Uh, and so now all this other stuff you're suffering. See, Jesus came so that all this stuff will get fixed up. Now, we used to say this when I was a younger Christian that, of course, you know, it's not true Christianity to believe that life will be a bed of roses once you become a Christian. But now that's mainstream teaching is mm. that it's not going to be a bed of roses but as you walk through them god will turn your situation into roses mm. you know I, I can't help thinking oh. that this oh. is comparable to the children of israel as they've just come out you know they come out of the desert they've gone through the waters and moses is on the mount and what they're doing now is creating a golden calf. Oh, I mean, yeah. That, that's what his message is. This is the golden calf for the church that has nothing to do with, with God. And in, in fact, yeah. I think, you know, oh, yeah. the, go the, golden calf, the golden calf, yep. The golden calf is healing. The golden calf is having a good job. Your finances secure, yeah. not living in isolation, in relationship your health, with your health is great. whoever, you know, um, this is this is self help gone totally wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. it is. Um, it, 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 it's, it's, it's like the children of Israel saying to Moses, "How dare you tell us that this and this and this that God said this? We want this, mm -hmm. and we're going to have this. And yeah. here's a man who's promising him that they can have it. Which yes. is and it's so impatience. Hard. It's impatience for uh, for temporal relief." Rather than yes, than a permanent hope, Jesus is your earthly panadol for temporary yeah, relief and pain. Yeah, Move on, yeah. Steve. We're going to get locked into hearing our own voices and loving it. <laughs> Harvey, I'm loving those comments you put through on the side, but just um, just speak up, bro. We'll hear it. In Acts two verse twenty seven, he knew the nature of God, and he said, "You will not leave my soul in hell. God will not leave you." in hell. He will not leave you. He will not abandon you, forsake you, and leave you on your own. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. It's not like I'm going to be left here to die. God's gone. He said, no, I know you, Lord. You will rescue me. You'll get me through this. So if we are today feeling like people have wounded us, they've crucified us, killed us, put us in a hole in the ground, put us through hell. God is determined to not leave us in that situation. And that snap, like if that doesn't uh, encapsulate everything. Harvey, what have you got there? I can hear that. Well, uh, I'm, I'm not so sure that he can extrapolate uh, the Messianic prophecies as to uh, what would happen to Jesus. The, when, when um, as I was saying, uh, they will not see, uh, let the Holy One see decay. And um, it's not referring to all of us, although, no. yes, we <laughs> will not see decay. We're, we're grateful for that. Um, but that was very specifically about Jesus and validated it, it as a Messianic prophecy. I don't think it's, it, it's a bit of a long bow to say um, 
it's okay, you can appropriate those promises for yourself. Uh, and not so good. But this wouldn't go down well in a Colosseum. Um, no. <laughs> no, it's got to get back to this because I've no. been in the Colosseum. I've been, I've walked that, I've walked in the Colosseum. And uh, I've tried to listen for the groans of creation, imagining that the history of humanity could be extracted from the dust under your feet in that place. Uh, and there are people like you and I, um, trembling in, you know, cages and, and iron bars waiting to be ripped to pieces by uh, wild beasts. That's where your theology really uh, cones down to what's important. Um, yep. and, uh, yep. and people languishing in jails in Siberia and in Chinese uh, church, uh, church, you know, in prisons and so on. That's where your understanding of the nature and the substitution nature of God, uh, of yep. Jesus' sacrifice for you, um, starts to bear fruit, even although you face death. And even although you face persecution, mm -hmm. it's not that Jesus is going to, God will take you out of your pain. Sometimes he'll put you into pain. And That's sometimes right. you will not get rescued. And sometimes you will end up getting 17 years like Richard Vermbrandt did in a Romanian prison. And mm -hmm. you may get the opportunity to taste freedom after that and pull your shirt up and show the BBC audience the scars on your back. There's some kind of glory in that. But there are many, many unmarked graves of people who have gone to their oh, yeah. death for their faith in Christ who did not get this message. And it's, and it's absolutely awful, isn't it, Harvey? It's, yeah. What he's done is bring the, the eternal, beautiful message of the Messiah's sacrificial work of salvation to be nothing more than a metaphor or a panacea for improving our life and us uh, getting out of the awful situations we may be in. And yes, we are in awful situations from time to time. Not even people in the, the West, you know, which is the most affluent part of the world, have awful situations that it gets worse and worse um, physically as you go into other parts of, uh, of the world for the, the Christian church. Mm -hmm. Uh, but to, to say that that's what that is about is an absolute awful reach of reading yourself into the scriptures, twisting the scriptures and promoting that poor teaching for financial gain. It's, it's, uh, it's also cool. quite dangerous to try to extrapolate the very, very oft quoted verse by his stripes were healed. Um, oh, yes. By yeah, his stripes yeah, yeah. were healed. Does that mean... Um, that you you grasp hold of that statement, you drive mm -hmm. it into your mind and repeat it frequently enough so that when you utter it, the faith comes by saying, Jesus, you've received suffering on my behalf. I yes. should not be sick. Yep. And Christian no, witchcraft. Believer, no believer should be sick either. Well, you know, as uh, as a number of people have said, please come to the hospital where I work. If that and faith is, is in yeah. fact mm. uh, a name it, claim it thing, and you can just simply appropriate the scripture yeah. and, and, and believe it strongly enough, <clears throat> and if you don't believe it strongly enough, there's a lack of faith. Because if you just say yeah. that word, that must, uh, that's, the, that's the open sesame uh, um, <coughs> statement it for is, it's a, it's, getting it's an over. Incantation. Yeah, and um, it, an it's, faith, it's faith destroying for a lot of people. Correct. Oh, absolutely. They, they, st they stay in the awful position they're in. And now they believe they don't have enough faith, that God doesn't like them, they are not yep. on the bus, and they don't believe enough, haven't given enough, haven't served enough, haven't done that. They haven't done enough to get yep. out of the situation. Now, in many cases, they're in the situation because of a, a quite simple logical error. They've not forgiven people. They have embezzled money. They're paying for uh, you know consequences of bad decisions. Um, and... It's not that Jesus is going to be the rescue helicopter to pull you out of it. And no. Because too many folk have, um, have had their faith shipwrecked by yeah, um, right. just simply believing that if you just grab a verse and say it enough, uh, you'll get through. Um, yeah. and that's, that well, leaves sad and destroyed people. I, I actually think that that verse, by his stripes we are healed, has nothing to do with physical bodily healing. I think when you, if you... Look at the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew is the guy who mostly in the Gospels explains the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy about Jesus. And if you look at Isaiah chapter 53, 
um, the specific part of Isaiah 53 that talks about healing, um, Jesus famously heals, I think, a paralytic at that moment is in Matthew chapter 8. And yeah. at that very moment, Matthew then says, this is the fulfillment of those verses in Isaiah 53 that talk about healing. So that whole chapter is about is obviously about Jesus going to the cross and, and atoning yeah. for yep. the sin of Absolutely. humanity. So that so Jesus and and to say that Jesus would need to atone for sickness, you've got to think about where that goes. Con you have to conclude, therefore, that sickness is something that you do and requires a punishment because yeah. atonement is the fixing is the paying yeah. for the punishment and so of course a it means that the guy who is sick then concludes he's being punished and then if he doesn't get healed then it means that more than likely god also didn't forgive his sins because why would god forgive his sins if he's not healing him if it's in the same package and That's a so, great point. so it's turning the atonement completely on its head. And the entire faith healing movement is based on this false premise that, that Jesus had to atone for healing on the cross, which is wicked. There's nothing, yeah. nothing could be further than the truth. And it's not to say that God doesn't heal today or can't. Of course he can. The Bible tells us that we should bring the sick to the elders mm -hmm. and the elders in the church should pray for them. Of course we do that, but there is nothing in that sense that Jesus had to die on the cross to, to atone for the punishment of sickness. And of Good course, th this is the bridge that they use to say Jesus also atoned for the sin of poverty or the curse of poverty. And so that effectively somewhere embedded in that atonement is your your package deal to get wealthy yeah so look on that steve let's hit the bar again um bring up bring up phil pringle and keep him going see where we can go in the last few minutes that is what easter tells us no, that god is interested in you and i not being left in darkness not being left in the pit if we give him our lives and trust ourselves to him he will deliver us our hope is based on the fact that God is good. God is good. He is not evil. He is not capricious. He is not bad. The book of Hebrews says Jesus is the perfect example of God on, on the earth. So if we want to know what God is like, we just need to look at Jesus. And I can't find one time Jesus making anyone sick. He only ever healed them. There's not one time that he killed anybody. He only brought people back to life. I'm sorry, but you know, I this of course. Sorry. Wait a second, you're not sorry, are you? Well, uh, this is just foundationally, <laughs> fundamentally wrong because what this yep. does is saying that, that 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 you know Jesus is now divorced from the Old Testament for starters. So so when yep. God wiped out in the entirety of humanity, apart from Noah and his family. Oh, Jesus wasn't part of that. No, the loving, this is, this is not the loving Jesus. This mm -hmm. is the horrible God of the Old Testament that, that we had to somehow dis detach ourselves from. And now this is, here comes along the loving Jesus who, who oh, he wouldn't do anything like that, of course. Oh, yes. It, dare dare I mention Ananias and Sapphira? Oh, well, well, that's we right. It, you know, of course. Uh, you know, we've got, we, we, we've got people that's who right. held back. They're, they held back their wealth, mm -hmm. hello, uh, and they were judged by God, by the Holy Spirit, and and taken there before Peter. That, oh. there's, there's, and there's many such examples. I could think of, you know, Herod and the angels striking him dead and the worms ate him the same yes. day. Like, mm -hmm. um, sorry, Those was are Jesus words. not involved in that? Like, uh, you yeah. know, and... No, I think this is just fundamentally broken. Yeah, it is. I, I, but I, it, it, it's also you, what we were getting to. A bit, what we were talking about before. It's it's all about 
the healings. It's all about the thing, but it doesn't match. It doesn't actually mention what you're actually being healed from. Is it being healed from sickness? In his case, yes, that's what he's talking about. He's being he's talking yeah. about healing from sickness. Yeah, but absolutely. Jesus, Jesus healed all those who you know came to him, who who wanted it. But it did all be, of them become be believers? Construed. No, they didn't. Mm -hmm. What's that, Harvey? Um, that's right, Craig. It could be construed that Jesus was an abject failure because all his subjects that he healed eventually died. Yes. <laughs> I'm just, and he's not I, just, sorry, I'm not sorry, I'm just right now of healing no, let's everyone. Be honest. Let's be honest about this because the demonstration of the glory of God in bringing people back to temporary health is a reflection of his capabilities as God in the flesh. Yes. Um, but his bigger message was death has lost its sting. Absolutely. Death is the final. Yes. And premature death in the in the case of the individuals he raised from the dead, like Lazarus and and the uh, you know little girl Tabitha and so on, um, they were demonstrations mm -hmm. of his divine power over death. Absolutely. And they were to enable every one of us who has to go through that uh, portal to have hope that though we die, yet yeah, shall we yeah, live. Yeah. If that yes. isn't hope, then nothing is. Because mm. uh, your best life now is oh. at best temporary. And for those of us who are listening to the low drone, which becomes louder and louder as we get older, that death is inevitable, we run out of hope as we get closer to the, to the gate. Uh, but it's the, it's the knowledge that... As we are, Christ was, but as he is, we will be. That mm -hmm. has to be the focus of the good news. Yes. Death is not the end. Death mm -hmm. is not the victor. Yeah. The final problem that we all face of dying Absolutely. is now yes. not the final problem. Yep. If that doesn't give hope, uh, uh, then it makes the temporary sufferings of That's this right. life uh, pale into insignificance because of the length of eternity that follows yeah. with the God of eternity. Eternity is mm. a very long that, time. That, mm. Yeah. Uh, so that's the good news. Yes. It that's is. That's the good news. Resurrection and, and, Sunday, that's the good news. Yeah. It's not that you'll rise and to that, fight another day. It's that you will rise and you will exist eternity. for eternity in the presence of God. He, as he says, mm. that's the good news. Not that yes. you'll be dragged out of your debt. Uh, maybe you'll go into debt. Uh, maybe if Jesus had told the rich man, go and sell all you have, that's hardly a Pentecostalist message for him. No, <laughs> no it's not. The, the, it's the, not. The, the funny go thing bankrupt. is, right, it's, 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 his message bankrupt. is about hope, and it seems like he's actually stripped every bit of Christian hope out yes. of the gospel yes. and no, given absolutely. you a false material hope that the yes, Christian yes. gospel never gives you. So oh, it's yes. like Absolutely. it's like it, it, it's more than a disaster, you know. Mm. It's like a hundred and eighty degree turn in the wrong direction. Mm. Yes, and when, I think when you preach well to said. Muslims, when you preach to Muslims, they know what they have to give up. It is yeah. not an easy life. Read Nabil Qureshi's, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, life story. You know, seeking yes. Allah, finding Jesus. He did it. It was not an easy life. Yep. He wasn't healed right. from esophageal cancer or stomach cancer. He died prematurely, leaving a wife and a child. Uh, he lost his family, hated by his parents. No, yep. it, it, you can't say that he had he had a better life now. Mm. He was no. doing pretty well. He would have been a doctor and probably done very well in his life. Oh, but absolutely. he chose to follow Jesus and died prematurely. How's the, mm. how's the gospel working for him or the, yeah. the current kind of... Uh, that sort of message. So, I, mm. I I can hear. I think what he means, uh, but then my ears hear what he says, and yes. uh, unfortunately, the good news isn't in it. Uh, if you've yeah, got one yeah. little message, uh, it's not come and die with me, uh, so that we can rise to eternal life forever. <laughs> well, there's actually, uh, if you listen to this whole message, there's more about depression. There's more about circumstance and failure and, and, and all of that kind of stuff, which is robbing the Christian of their real hope. It's, 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 it's giving them more about their circumstances and nothing about the reality 
of being united with Jesus Christ in eternal life. Uh, it's it's in his suffering it's, here. It's bogus. It is completely bogus. Bogus, dude. It's totally bogus. It, it's you know, like, but it, I, I I I hate to come back to this, but but you know, having had some experience with um, friends and in the organization that I was involved with, multi level marketing. This is exactly what they do. They, they, they have to dangle a carrot in front of you continually, continually because carrot. the guy at the top can only get wealthy when all of his minions continually dangle the carrot in front of the next downline and the next downline. And the carrot's actually not, you never get it. You, the only, you get a little mm -hmm. bit of a snippet of it. It's like you get a bit of carrot peel by dangling the carrot onto the guy who's down below. And the, the the guy, the only guy who gets the carrot is the guy, the guy at the top. Absolutely. And so I'm afraid, you know, I know that this is not his intention, right? So I don't, I don't want to be totally facetious. And no, I, I, I do believe as, that, that there are many sincere people in the C3 church. And, Absolutely. But, Absolutely. But, but that's a false at the end of the day, we are teaching. commanded to be good Bereans and compare with what does scripture say? And this is what we're aiming to do. So for, for those of you guys who are listening to us, it's not like we, we're suddenly on a hate Phil Pringle trip, you know, no, absolutely, absolutely not. Um, we just, we're commanded as Christians and essentially Christianity has got to be all about what does the Bible say? It's not about what mm. we think or what we'd like what we it, to, it say. to say. Yes. You know, it, it can't be about that. Um, mm. And actually, when it becomes about that, that's a, that's a red rag to a bull. That's just, it's like yeah. a major alert sign. Something is wrong. Yeah. And yeah. so if you happen to be somebody who's caught in the C3 or the, you know, this kind of church organization, food chain, just... Move out of it and find a Bible-believing church where you will yeah. get fed and where you will live in a mm -hmm. Christian community mm -hmm. that is truly seeking to teach you about Jesus, the real Jesus, mm -hmm. the Jesus oh, yeah. that is portrayed That's in the pages of the New Testament. Yeah. Look, on, the, on, on that, I'd like to read something from, from Hebrews chapter 6. Please do. Uh, Therefore... Leaving the elementary message about Messiah, let us go on to maturity. Not like again the foundation of repentance from death from dead works, faith in God, teaching about ritual washing, laying on of hands, and resurrection from the dead and eternal judgment. And we will do if God permits. Now, look, don't uh, don't get us wrong. I want us to go on to maturity. But if we can't get the elementary teachings right, which is what yes. Phil is talking about this morning, they're all elementary teachings. Resurrection yep. from the dead, re repentance. Uh, yeah, these are elementary teachings of the Christian faith. Absolutely. If you can't get those right, you can't go on to maturity. Yep. And I think the, the, what the writer to Hebrews goes on then to say further in Hebrews 6, we have a superior hope. Then in seven, we have a superior priesthood. And therefore, and then in eight, we have a superior covenant. We can't yeah. get onto those things like hope, uh, the, the superior priesthood of Jesus Christ and the superior covenant of the new covenant unless we have a fundamental understanding of the goodness that is, is wrapped up in those elementary Absolutely. teachings. Absolutely. Let's get the elementary teachings right. And then let's go on to maturity. Please, yeah. please, so please, Craig, please get the elementary stuff right in the first place. You don't, um, you don't happen to have a grading scale uh, for this, do you? <laughs> bum, bum. <laughs> so, gentlemen, there's, there's the grading scale. Oh, no, look, sometimes yeah. Phil gets it right. Let me tell you that. He does get it yeah. right sometimes. But today... Double he thumbs. has got the he's got the elementary teachings completely wrong, and he needs yes. to take a step back and find out exactly what we're being healed from. Absolutely. Are we being healed from our temporal circumstances? Absolutely not. No sometimes, sometimes there may be relief from that, 
but the relief is found in the hope that is in Jesus Christ and that we have eternal life through him, through his atonement from our sins, and we are credited with his righteousness, not a righteousness of our own. That's great. So on that note, gentlemen, I will wrap it up here. Uh, Folks watching us out there on YouTube land and the broad, wide interweb, wherever you may be, thanks for joining us. Remember to subscribe if you like the channel uh, content. Give it a thumbs up. Please leave some comments. Keep those discussions going. Uh, We'll catch you. Remember, one of our next videos uh, coming up that you'll see is Bill Johnson and Hillsong coming together. That should be fun. Uh, But as for now, thanks for joining Hit The Bar down under in the down under campus. We always need to shout out to the rest of the campuses that are out there. And as for now, we'll say uh, goodbye, God bless, and see you.